Oh, all right. Forgot to turn on the camera. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. We're glad that you have decided to join our Sunday evening Bible study. Uh, the virtual Bible study, if you will. We're, we're glad that you are here. And, uh, you know, this, uh, uh, this month, the month of November, uh, begins the the official, maybe, uh, timetable of um, holiday season. And I, I got to admit that I am very, uh, I, I like the month of November because of uh, uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, I've always liked Thanksgiving from a time that I can remember as a child. And uh, growing up, I, I've always loved the the family coming together and and having that great big meal uh, it's just something about Thanksgiving that that I really do like and the food's not too bad either <laughs> uh, with that being said and with us thinking about Thanksgiving and and being thankful uh, that's what I want to talk about tonight I want us to talk about thanking God now there are many places in Scripture that that speaks about Thanksgiving, in in the means of being thankful, but I want to direct our attention over to the uh, 138th Psalm, and I want us to notice what David um, wrote here, and in this Psalm it's really dealing with the uh, uh, the Lord's goodness to man, uh, and and. So David begins this psalm in verse 1 saying, I will praise you with my whole heart before the gods. I will sing praises to you. I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name. For you have magnified your word above all your name. In the day when I cried, cried out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. David is really saying, God, I, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for what you are doing for me. And, you know, there are times when maybe we forget about uh, being thankful and thanking someone. And, you know, and maybe, um, maybe I've taken that for granted myself. Uh, maybe I don't tell the congregation here in Irwin how much I'm thankful for, for you and, and working here with you. You know, when I was growing up, and I think I've shared this with you several times, but when I was growing up, um, my mother had what she called magic words. And she taught these words or phrases to her kindergarten class. My mother taught kindergarten in the home for almost three if not four decades so she taught children children and and she had these magic words written on a poster and they were uh, posted on the back of the of a door or maybe I, it might have been even the wall she had them on and these magic words were like please and thank you uh, yes ma'am and no ma'am but I, as, I, I, as a child, I was taught to especially say thank you. And if I didn't say thank you, I was always reminded by my parents to say thanks. Now, when I didn't use these magic words, and there's nothing magical about them, it's just something nice to do, and, and I think maybe our children today don't have any idea what it's like to show respect to the elders because it's yeah, no, maybe, yes, huh, uh, word things like this that really are not appropriate uh, to show an adult in my opinion but I was taught to say thank you I was taught to say please and thank you and and I was taught to um, tell someone thanks for what they've done for me um, you know if I didn't use these words like I said then I was reminded because it was um, it was important to my parents that I showed uh, respect and showed someone that I appreciated the thought behind the gift. <laughs> you know, my brother and I got a, a gift together one year for Christmas from, from our aunt. 
and this uh, gift was an uh, an LP album, and uh, I I can remember the um, the, the artist was uh, Charlie Rich. Now my brother and I neither, neither one of us liked country music at that time, and and uh, we definitely didn't care for Charlie Rich. And so when we opened up this gift. Uh, we were a little bit disappointed in, in what we received, but however, my parents still made me go, and my brother, go to my aunt and say thank you. And I always wondered why they, they made me do that, and it, it's because they wanted me to understand that it's, it's being thoughtful. They, they, my aunt and her husband thought enough about my brother and I to get us a gift, and so we needed to show our gratitude. Um, now, gratitude is an attitude which all Christians need to have, and, and that's exactly what we need to, um, what we need to be, gratit grateful, and when we talk to God and we pray to God in prayer, that, that gratefulness, being grateful to Him for what He does, should be something that is very sincere. I think maybe that sometimes we pray a prayer so often, and we pray the same prayer so often to God, that maybe our words are of little effect, because we're not really paying attention to what we're saying. It's just something that we've always said. And when we say, God, thank you for the blessings you've given us, you know, it's just something that rolls off our lips. But when we really think about being grateful for what God gives us, I think it brings in a whole new meaning of how we're going to show God and word that to Him. Uh, a couple of verses I want you to look at with me. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning in verse 17, the Apostle Paul um, wrote these words, Pray without ceasing, verse 17. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ for you. In everything give thanks. How? Through our prayer to God. In Matthew chapter 15 and in verse 36, we see the example given by Christ to us as He thanked God for what He received. Now this is when uh, Christ is feeding a great multitude and we're told in verse 36 that that Jesus took the seven loaves and the fish and he gave thanks, broke them and gave them to his disciples and his disciples gave to the multitude. We're not going to discuss this great feat, this miracle that Jesus did, but more we're going to, to remember that when Jesus received this food, he thanked God for it. And because of that, that food, that little bit of food fed many people. In Philippians chapter 4, and verse 6, Paul writes, Be anxious for nothing, be worried for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, here it is, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Now, I know that we're, we thank God. I know, I've heard it, and but when we look at this psalm from, that David wrote in Psalm 138, there are some ways that we can give our thankfulness to God. And I want us to look at, at uh, these ways. Um, I, by looking at what, Paul, uh, what uh, David wrote, I can thank God by praise and devotion. Now, David wrote about Thanksgiving in three different ways in this, in this chapter. The first way was worship. Notice verse 1 again of Psalm 138. I will praise you with my whole heart. Before the gods I shall sing praises to you. I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name. David was saying, I'm going to praise you. And this word praise here means to be reverent. It has the idea to worship. And, and David no doubt appreciated the fact that, that he was able to worship God. I, I, I'm hopeful that, that all of you uh, 
are grateful that God gives us an, uh, a time to worship Him. I'm hoping that all of you were grateful that, that today was the first day of the week, the time that we could come together and as a family of God and worship Him, whether it, regardless if it was online like we're doing now or if you were able to be here. Once again, we had great numbers. We had 40 in attendance here, but we also had uh, around 36 online. And, and, and that's a wonderful thing. And these are our members. I did not count our, our visitors that were watching, and there were more visitors today that were watching. But I, I'm, I'm talking about the members of our congregation that were here and, uh, and present by these means. David said that, God, I'm going to, um, um, with my whole heart, I'm going to worship you. I'm going to sing praises to you, and I'm grateful for this. The totality that is all that is in me, I'm going to worship you, God. You know, Daniel is another person that comes to my mind. Daniel was a very religious man himself, wasn't he? As a matter of fact, King Darius signed a decree, and he made a decree out that, that no one will pray to another god and give him the praises, or if they did, they would suffer severe consequences. But Daniel remained true and loyal to God. God had Daniel's complete heart. And that we, ha we see that, that Daniel, even with the threat that the king put out this decree, Daniel still prayed to God. Look at Daniel chapter 6 and verse 10. In Daniel chapter 6 and verse 10, Daniel, uh, we're told that Daniel knew, number one, that this decree, this writing had been signed. And he went home and in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem. That's the second point. He knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed, gave thanks before his God, as was the custom since his early days. Three things. Number one, Daniel knew that the king had signed this decree. He knew it, but that didn't stop him. He wasn't fearful of what a king was going to do. He knew that God was in control. So he knew it was there, and he did not hide his loyalty to God. Notice, he prayed with his windows open. Now, have you, have you thought about how many people with those windows open saw Daniel praying in that room and went and told the king, Daniel is praying. He's not, pray he's not following your decree. He's, he's praying to his God. You see, serving God and being the person that God wanted him to be was not something secretive. Daniel didn't care who all looked us all and knew what he was doing. Now, there are times when Nancy and I will go and, and we will eat, at, uh, eat out in a restaurant and, and we will pray together thanking God for the food. Now, we don't pray out loud. Uh, we pray quietly between the two of us so that we don't cause a commotion or uh, bring a attention to ourselves and you know the Bible talks about uh, about that guy uh, the, about that Jew who prayed and he beat his chest and he says this I do I pray uh, and I give uh, my tithing and and then here is this publican standing afar off we're told in scripture and he wouldn't even look up into heaven but he said be merciful to me one man was very proudful of who he was and what he had done while the other one was very merciful. You know, in Daniel, he wasn't scared. He knew who he served and he knew who could take care of him. And three times a day, he knelt down and prayed to God. Now, David also lets us know that, that he thanks God in, in song. And uh, going back to verse 1 
of uh, Psalm 138, David writes, I will praise you with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing praises to you. Now the idea of, of what we're reading here kind of puts in my mind the idea of worship. Because the word here, uh, praise, means to glorify God. And so, in my mind, I'm thinking that David is writing about worshiping God. Um, he was singing praises to God. And when I think about uh, David singing praises to God, I think about what the Bible tells you and I is, as members of the kingdom, as members of the church, are supposed, uh, supposed to do. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16, we're told, Let the word of Christ dwell richly in your heart, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord, singing to the Lord. You know, how often have I said that I'm not a very good singer and I never have claimed to be? And the, the worst uh, voice that I have in singing to God, it's beautiful to God because we are singing with grace in our hearts to God. God is the one who we're singing to, not the other people in the congregation. Even though we are teaching one another uh, when we sing songs, and that's what this verse is, is telling us, to, to teach with, and ad, ad, admonish one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, but we're singing to God. In Ephesians chapter 5, in verse 19, where, where Paul writes, we're speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So when I think about what David says about he's going to worship God, he's going to sing praises to God, I, I see that that's what I need to do as well because that's part of the New Testament worship. When we sing praises to God, in our song service, there are times of our songs deal with being thankful or thanksgiving. An uh, example of this is the song that I've reminded us of several times. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. When we count our blessings, we should be thanking God for it. I think about James chapter 5 and verse 13 where James writes, Is anyone suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. You know, this morning, I, uh, the sermon that, we, that I preached and that I presented to you was God is bigger than any problem that we have. And, and God has solutions to our problems before we even knew we had a, an issue. And so when James said, uh, writes in, in chapter 5 and verse 13, if, is anyone among you suffering? Think about that. I guess I should have used this verse this morning as well. If it's anyone among you suffering, do you have a problem? Do you have an issue? How are you feeling? Are you sick? Are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you ready to wave the white flag of surrender? Let him pray. And so, with that being said, that's exactly what David writes. Look at verse 2. I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you had magnified your, your word above all your name. I will pray to you, God. I will thank you for what you do. There is a different word being used here where, uh, where David says, I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name. The idea here in, in, uh, in praise means to give thanks or to be thankful. That's what David is saying. I'm going to be thankful to you, God. I'm going to give thanks to you with thanksgiving for what you've done. You know, being thankful is a daily attitude and the daily activity of, of a child of God because God blesses us daily. And we need to thank Him with our whole heart as David wrote. When I thank God, it's going to be because I reverence God and I respect God. Let's define reverence. It means to show respect. You know, when in Japan, 
there's a custom uh, in Japan that when uh, people uh, come to one another, especially those who know one another, it is customary for them to bow to one another. And the custom is whoever bows the lowest uh, is the one who is showing the most respect. Maybe there are sometimes I was stationed in Japan for two years while I was in the Navy, and as you would go around, there would be people who really didn't know one another, but they would bow down toward one another. And it's not to worship them, but it's to show them respect. But you knew when there was a family member or a, a, a close friend because they would bow, and the one that bowed down the, the furthest was the one that was showing the most respect. Um, another way that was shown respect when I was over there is that the young people, uh, the, the biggest mode of travel over there was trains. And uh, the young people would, would be on a train to go to school. A lot of them had to ride trains to where their school was. But when the train was full and an elderly person got on the train, the, ch the youth, regardless of what the age, would, would get up and offer the elderly the seat. And the, the uh, elderly, so that they wouldn't lose face, would thank the, the young person and sit down. So this is the idea here of reverence and respect. And David is, shown, is wanting to, in his writing that he respects God. He's showing God reverence. And David said, I'm going to worship towards your holy temple. In verse 2 again. That word worship in this text here, means to bow down in homage to God. Worship is bowing to God. We don't do it in, in the service. And in the Old Testament worship, many times that they did. But it's the idea of showing reverence and respect to the Almighty God. They would bow to God to show Him respect. I'm afraid that, that we have gotten to the point maybe in our lives that we're not showing God uh, the respect that we should when we come to worship. That we have a casual maybe attitude of, of uh, worship. You know, I don't know how God feels about a person that rushes into the worship service and rushes right out. Um, I'm not sure how God feels about a person that is uh, not giving their all in worship. I'm not sure he's happy with it. And yet I understand there are times that make it very difficult for us to put our 100% effort in worship. We, maybe we don't feel good, but we still want to be at worship. Maybe uh, on the way in we had a flat tire causing us to be late and and so it kind of flust, frustrates us a little bit. I, I can understand that. But when we come to worship, we need to give God the homage that He deserves. This is His time. He is the, the uh, audience, and we are the participants. God is here. God is watching. God is listening. And He's seeing everything we do when we worship Him in this building and when we're not here. So what is my attitude when we think about it toward our worship to God? How do I feel about it? I hope that you understand and you want to show reverence. And when we think about being reverence in our worship, we're, we're talking about being humble. James chapter 4 verse 10 says, Humble yourselves in the sight of God and He will lift you up. You know, there's another verse that maybe I should have used this morning with uh, the... God is bigger than our problems. If we become humble and humble ourselves, God will lift us. In, so, in verse 4 of this, this psalm, look at Psalm 138, verse 4, the psalm that we're in. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, when they hear your words of your mouth. There is a time coming, friends, that everybody's going to hear the words of God. Those that don't agree with God, those that refuse to hear God, those that call themselves atheists, they're going to hear God. That's 
judgment day, my friends. And so, we need to have that reverence and respect for God when we worship Him and be thankful that we have this opportunity. I thank God every time that I stand up for God. Think about that for a moment. Every time that we stand up for truth, we are standing up for God and we're thanking Him. We sing songs like, Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Ye soldiers of the cross, lift high the royal banner. Stand up for Jesus. And going back to verse 2 of Psalm 138, David said that you have magnified your word above all your name. Magnified. It means to make large. It's more important than any other word. God's word is the word. His Bible, and that's what he gave to us. And I thank God when the word is upheld. I thank God when our elders uh, stand for the truth and behind the truth and stand with God and stand with me in preaching the truth. Think about this. When uh, Saul became a Christian, in Acts chapter 9 and verses 20 through 23, Saul was preaching and teaching Jesus, the gospel. And we're told that there was no delay in his teaching. As a matter of fact, in verse 20 it says, Immediately Saul preached the Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. This is totally opposite of what he was teaching beforehand. As a matter of fact, he was casting people into prison who was believing that. Look at verse 21. Because there, then all who heard were amazed and said, Is this not the one who destroyed those who called on this name in Jerusalem and has come here for that purpose so that he might bring them bound to the chief priest? In other words, the people were confused. They thought that Saul was pulling a trick. They had no knowledge that Saul had actually been converted and became a child of God. And that's why we're told immediately he preached the Christ. But what happened with Saul? He increased all the more in strength, spiritual strength, and confronted the, the Jews who dwelt in Damascus, proving that this Jesus is the Christ. He increased in, in the spiritual strength. He stood for the Word of God. He upheld God's Word. Now, if we go back to verse 7 of, of Psalm 138, we see that David uh, is kind of confessing something. He says, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies. Your right hand will save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. David understood that God's mercy is forever. It's out there for anyone and everyone. And we're told in, in uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 3 that God's love is everlasting love. And so God's mercy is because God loves us. And His mercy and love last forever. As a matter of fact, when, we're, when we look at what what Paul wrote in, to the church of Rome. He said, if God is for us, who can be against us? Something that we may need to consider. God is always for His children. It's not going to be easy to live the Christian life, is it? <laughs> Sometimes it can be very difficult. But, you know, anything in life is worth working for, and what we work for is going to make it a little bit harder. We'll appreciate it. And when we think about heaven and how we are, what we are doing in order to get heaven, get to heaven rather, it should help us appreciate it more and thank God daily that He has prepared that place for us. And we need to look forward, I do, I look forward to it, to the day that 
I can go and and live for all eternity in a wonderful, beautiful place that God built and God created. I hope that this uh, lesson hasn't been too much of a distraction. Um, I hope that this lesson has been beneficial to you and have enc have encouraged you. I hope you have a pleasant evening, and I hope that this week is uh, good for you. I hope that nothing bad comes your way. I, I thank God for you daily, just like Paul thanked God for the the. Christians that were in his life. I thank God for those of you who listen to me and give me words of encouragement. Uh, you know, it, it is nice to receive words of encouragement. Thank you. But most of all, I thank God for you and for this congregation. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, we'll be back on this, state, on this, this mode on Facebook Live and Google Meet, too as we have another opportunity to study God's Word. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.